Shares of Southwest Airlines rising over 25% so far this year. Let's check in with Gary Kelly, CEO of Southwest Airlines, for a look at what to expect from the airline in 2018. And Gary, I know you just started flying Boeing's new 737 MAX jets in October. Talk about what you saw in this plane and what passengers will notice. Uh, sure, Scott. Uh, great to be with you. Um, well, we're, we're very excited. It's definitely the future for Southwest Airlines. Uh, it's the same uh, seating configuration as what we have in the 737-800, uh, but it brings uh, all new engine technology. The engines are 15% more fuel efficient, uh, which gives us a longer range uh, for flying the airplane. Uh, but uh, I think in terms of the customer experience, it's 40% quieter uh, than the uh, engines on the uh, Dash 800. So it's a very nice ride. Um, we have enhanced uh, lighting and uh, audio uh, configuration on the airplane as well. So uh, we're just getting rave reviews from our customers. And you mentioned the fuel efficiency of the 737 MAX. You know, oil prices have been on the upswing. They're still obviously much lower than they were a few years ago. Will consumers notice an increase in fares because of rising oil prices? Well, you know, we're, we're working hard uh, at Southwest to be the low fare uh, leader for America and uh, doing everything we can to keep our fares low. The fares are actually down over the last several years, uh, so I can't give you any, um, uh, any real insight as to what fares might be next year other than to say that we're going to be working hard to keep fares low. And, and Gary, you don't charge baggage fees, you don't charge change fees yet your stock has outperformed American Airlines, United, and Delta Airlines so far this year. How do you do it? How do you get by without some of this revenue that your competitors are bringing in? Well, it's all about great service and low fares. And uh, if we can keep our costs low, we can afford to bundle all of those traditional services into the fare. Uh, obviously, we, we drive very strong profit margins with that low cost structure and we're able to uh, avoid nickel and diming our customers. That's what our customers want, and that's certainly what we want to offer them. So with that, what does flight demand look like in 2018 from what you're looking at? Well, it's a real short cycle business, so we don't have a lot of insight beyond uh, you know, roughly the next 30 to 45 days. Uh, but the trends are very strong here in the fourth quarter. Uh, we had strong traffic uh, for uh, October. Uh, we'll be releasing our November traffic here uh, shortly. We're expecting unit revenue growth uh, year over year in the fourth quarter. And uh, based on all the signs that we have available uh, uh, to us right now, the outlook for 2018 uh, is really good. So our goal will be to uh, maintain very strong load factors uh, for next year and uh, grow along with our capacity. Uh, increase and uh, continue to generate uh, some positive unit revenue comparisons. And you're also set to start flights in Hawaii next year. Why enter this market? Well, it's an important market uh, and it's where people want to go. Uh, we're the number one airline in California and in particular Hawaii is an important destination there. Uh, we have a lot of competition uh, in Hawaii. It's just not a time for us to uh, sit back and uh, be complacent. So. Uh, the number one thing customers look for uh, in an airline is where do you fly? Uh, and it's missing from our route system. We're the largest airline uh, serving uh, uh, America, and uh, uh, it's just time for us to go. So we're excited about it. Our customers are excited about it, and uh, uh, I think we'll be very successful there. And Gary, on your last earnings call, you mentioned how you'd like to add more international destinations in 2018. Any areas that are on your wish list, would Europe ever be a possibility for you? Well, there are some areas on a wish list uh, for sure, but uh, right now uh, we're flying near international. We're using the Boeing 737 to do that. It performs that mission very well. Uh, further, we're flying uh, only south uh, of the U.S. at this point, so it's Mexico, the Caribbean, uh, Central America. So we'll continue uh, in the near term to focus uh, on that region. Right now we have 15 international destinations and um, uh, as you, as you uh, asked me earlier, uh, Hawaii is the next destination up for Southwest Airlines uh, next year. Uh, so uh, we'll just have to stay tuned about uh, what we pick next. Europe is not on our list right now, 
Uh, but, uh, you know, it might be uh, an opportunity for us at some point with the 737 in the future. But uh, right now, our orientation is uh, Caribbean, Mexico, Central America. Yeah, because Norwegian Airlines is flying the 737 MAX from the New York area to Europe. It uh, will absolutely do the mission. And, um, you know, the thing that's very nice right now at Southwest is we have opportunities to expand within the 48 states. We have opportunities to expand uh, beyond the borders uh, to near international markets at Hawaii. We're looking at Alaska. So uh, uh, the, all of that will keep us busy, and uh, uh, Europe is just a lower priority for us. And Gary, I want to shift to a few questions about the broader airline industry. What about tax reform? Are you pleased with the proposals that are being debated right now in Congress? We're pleased. Um, it, it would be certainly a benefit for the transportation industry and uh, certainly a benefit for Southwest Airlines. I've written every member of Congress to let them know that we're a proponent. Uh, I do think that it would uh, be good for the overall economy uh, in terms of spurring uh, growth uh, and in particular in terms of uh, driving uh, job growth. So. Uh, uh, it's uh, been a long time coming and a very welcome change, and the airline industry in particular would, uh, uh, I think, is in need of that kind of tax uh, burden relief and uh, would benefit from that. And do you think consumers, you know, may be saving a few hundred dollars a year from lower taxes? Do you think some of that money would go into more travel spend? Well, I think that there's that uh, potential consumer benefit. Um, I think, uh, at least in terms of corporate tax reform, just making corporations in the United States more competitive around the world is very, very important. Uh, and of course, it will provide companies like ours uh, the ability to invest more in the business, add jobs, uh, and you know, just share those gains uh, with lower taxes with uh, shareholders, employees, and, and customers. But uh, to the extent that we can generate more growth in the economy, absolutely that's going to put more money in the hands of consumers and absolutely I think that will support uh, more robust travel demand. And can you update us on the government's efforts to modernize the nation's air traffic control system? As an airline CEO, what would you like to see happen? Well, first of all, we'd love to see the entire system modernized uh, yesterday uh, and uh, have all of our flights um, uh, efficiently uh, uh, scheduled and uh, operated with next generation procedures, satellite based uh, navigation techniques. Um, on the current course, uh, it just doesn't feel like that's going to happen uh, in my lifetime, uh, if ever. So uh, we see the path forward there to reform the FAA uh, by creating a not for profit uh, entity uh, that would. Um, be uh, managed by a board of directors and would be able to fund these long live projects in a way that we can actually bring the modernization benefits to bear. So uh, that's not the focus in Congress right now. As you know, it's uh, on tax reform, but I'm hopeful that we can uh, uh, take that up uh, early next year and get that done. And, and when you say not-for-profit, would it be a full-on privatization of the air traffic control system or more of a perhaps government-private partnership? Uh, I think we'd be very happy with what uh, the administration has proposed, what uh, Chairman Schuster uh, in the House has proposed, what uh, NAV Canada uh, looks like uh, uh, in Canada. And uh, privatization Im implies a commercialization, and that's not what we want. But yes, it would be a separate corporation. It wouldn't be subject to the uh, uh, government uh, budgeting process, and it would be run more like a... Um, a corporation in terms of uh, operations uh, as well as uh, long-term financing and capital uh, project management. So it's, uh, it's a very large uh, institution. Uh, it's uh, just behind in terms of the tools and techniques that we use and there's just tremendous oppor opportunity to make the system more efficient, uh, to have it be more climate friendly uh, and um, the benefits are potentially 15% uh, less time in the air. So, uh, you know, you, you can quickly do the math and see what kind of fuel savings, 
uh, and greenhouse gas emission savings that would translate to. Yeah, I mean, if it's one thing we can all agree on is everyone hates airline delays and a better ATC system would help that. And Gary, before we let you go, the surge in Bitcoin prices has been just incredible. Do you see a world where I could eventually pay for my airfare in Bitcoin? Would you ever accept that? You know, uh, it's kind of, it, it's, uh, it's hard to envision, but um, uh, it is it is astounding uh, how fast that uh, has moved, and uh, we'll just have to we'll just have to wait and see on that front. I think um, the the way our monetary systems work today are pretty efficient, um, so I don't know that I have an opinion on that right now. It's obviously not mainstream with uh, any of our travel uh, purchases, but uh, who knows? Something uh, obviously to continue to monitor. All right, well, watch how it plays out. Gary Kelly, CEO of Southwest Airlines, pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Scott.